In this video, you're going to witness skilled Asian barbecue masters roasting up three different animals whole, all with three vastly different price tags. Oh my oh god. My this god. Is amazing. Oh my god. Saigon or Ho Chi Minh is a city of nearly 9 million people, meaning a near endless variety of restaurants to choose from. All this selection can get a little overwhelming. Why is he so focused? So today, I brought Calvin and Twin to join me. We'll be revealing mm -hmm. this city's most impressive roasted meats. From the very affordable... I just got a really crunchy bite. Mm. What's the anus? <laughs> to the shockingly expensive... Three, two, one. It all starts here. Calvin, Buddy. Twin. Hello. All three of us are here. I know. Today, we're going to be trying an onslaught of animals roasted whole, mm. starting with this right here. This is a chupacabra. Twin, any guesses? It's a rabbit. It's a rabbit. It's not uncommon to spot street side rotisseries all over the city. Usually, you'll find either chicken or pork. But today, we've discovered something a little bit different. Whole roasted rabbits. There. With her four years of rabbit roasting experience, what did you do before this? Miss Jum is here to show us how it's done. Ah, she used to be an office worker. Miss Jum sources her rabbits from her sister's farm. Here they start out adorable, cute, and fluffy. But by the time Jum gets them, the hair is already removed. Well, most of it, anyways. That's why the first step here is torching. <laughs> Why does it still need to be torched? She said that the skin is getting firmer. Ah, I think I burned it a little bit. We have to eat this later. Oh my god, look at that. It's like scrinking. Ah, but it's hot. Scrinking is not a word. Shrinking. It smells like burnt skin and singed hair. Mm. With this level of work, she's going to need a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the difference already. Ah, it's heavy, actually. There's no way that weighs more than five pounds. <laughs> So we're gonna give it a wash, put some seasoning on it, and then we're gonna roast it. Could you sell this one to someone else? <laughs> Her 10 spice blend includes cinnamon, star anise, and five spice. With seasoning complete, the rabbits leave the kitchen and hit the streets. There's a lot of things. There's cow, there's pig. Why did you choose the rabbit out of all the protein? Four years ago, it was not very common to eat rabbit. There's a few stuff, but not a lot. So she would like to do some experiment with this. Halfway through roasting, the rabbits are basted with the natto oil and her secret seasoning. Finally, sprinkle on some sesame seeds and roast one last time. Boom! Right here, our first meal. Twin, how are you doing in the middle? Are you getting smashed? Not the most uncomfortable thing ever. Right here, we have the rabbit. This part. Mm. Should we start with this? I have a quick story before you start. Okay, good. When I was five years old, my mother bought me a rabbit. The rabbit got really fat. Three months later, we were eating rabbit curry. I have re Why are you laughing? This is serious. True story, by the way, true story. I have very PTSD about eating rabbit right now. Story finished? Yeah. Let's eat. <laughs> the skin has turned orange. It is beautifully roasted, super juicy looking at it, which is surprising because a rabbit is very lean meat. It looks like chicken. It'll taste like chicken too. Better. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like it. I find it to be very tender, juicy. I'm kind of shocked by how juicy it is. Right here, did you know rabbits had a drumstick? It's wing night in the rabbit hole. Let me find mine. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's juicy. Mm. Now, the skin's not quite crunchy. It has a certain leatheriness to it, but it still has a kind of a crisp as you bite through it. The fat's really rendered down, so the skin's nice and crispy. It's pretty similar to chicken, but I think it's much better. So you think you'll start eating this instead of rotisserie chicken? Of course. This brings me to my next topic, the price. $13.12. So if you're buying a rotisserie chicken in Vietnam, you probably expect to spend eh, four or five bucks. Sure. This is about three times the price, but you're getting a few different things. You're getting to experience an animal you don't get to eat all the time. It's got that great skin on there, and there's just so much of it. Being that you were in the kitchen and you torched this, you earned the right to eat this rabbit. Exactly. More than you guys. These two guys oh. didn't live a finger. Oh, yeah? Well, the next location, Calvin's going to be helping. I am? Calvin went to... Calvin, you still have some shit on your mouth. Really? What the f It's all my f mouth. Ma'am, put her there. Okay, done. Miss Stewart's business is the first and only in this massive city, selling not pork, not chicken or rabbit, but roasted duck. But this is duck like you've never seen before. Here you have the quad flavored duck, a duck that's stuffed, but also has four different flavor quadrants on the outside, north, east, south, west. So before we get to that, I know you're trying to perfect what you're doing here. That's why I brought Calvin. You see, Calvin went to a French cooking school in California, San Francisco. I thought he went to the one in Arizona. That's online. 
No. It says, go to your fridge, get two eggs. <laughs> Before Calvin can desecrate this duck, it needs to be stuffed with a bunch of ingredients. Soybean paste, her secret spice blend, white wine, minced garlic, and Chinese pickled radish. Duck is something that is not consumed enough where I come from. And it's when I came to Asia that I really fell in love with roasted duck. Wait, Calvin, you're translating? Yeah. Well, how would you rate his Vietnamese out of 10? Three. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how this goes. Mười là cao lắm. Một là có một trung bình. Tiếp tục em thế nào? Năm đến. Seven. No, that's not true. That's not true. How long have you been in the duck business? Chỉ mới mở năm sau hai Oh, eight months. Oh wow, what have some of the challenges been since you're kind of a newer place? As any small business owner, one of the challenges is the marketing. To get the message out there for consumers. But slowly, she's gonna get out there. Next, they inflate the duck like a portable mattress. Separating the skin from the muscle, allowing the skin to crisp up even more during the roasting process. I'm ready to do this. The first flavor, charcoal base, this is easy, it's like painting my house. Except for, he doesn't have a house. It's actually no smell, no flavor, but it can increase the richness of the duck. Are you still working on the charcoal, Calvin? Yes. I'm doing, doing a, great a great job, job. on that one. Yeah. Next, we're going to paint this duck with our flower concoction. We try to get her to say what kind of flower, and she's like, no. She won't say. Seven different kinds of flower. It's literally all of them. <laughs> this, I think, not as much about the flavor, but it's really like a food glue. Because this layer is not just about the flower, it's about what's going to go on there next. A bunch of chili flakes, and it's in beautiful contrast to that super dark charcoal. I've never seen anything like this. Next, we're going to do some white sesame. How do you think Calvin's doing? He's doing decent, but he, why is he so focused? I thought he'd be more at ease during this process. A day, one day, man, được bao nhiêu con? How many ducks does she sell in a day? Four hundred and fifty to sixty con. Fifty to sixty in a day. Calvin, are you doing your own show over there? What do you think? Yoi. 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 Oh, no idea. Excellent. Oh, really? Phenomenal. Calvin, I think you did excellently. From here, she's gonna finish it up, and soon we're gonna try some quad flavored duck. The last layer of flavor is applied just before roasting, as they spread on a gooey coat of honey. Right here we are at our second location. Uh, not quite. So you can actually eat at the second location. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in a random alleyway, staring at a wall. Right here though, take a look at this. It's beautiful and I can see four different things. Plus the bread all along the outside. This wow. is called manto. It is very common when eating Chinese duck to have some of this delicious fried bread. And then here, Kevin, why don't you explain what this is? It looks like a duck jus. It is a duck jus. It's all these juices that the duck excretes during the roasting process. I think the first move right here is to take this fried bread and dip it into this beautiful glistening Ooh. duck jus. Ooh. Okay, okay. Oh, savory, sweet, so rich. Even the bread alone is effing fantastic. Crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Mm. Next, we have four different flavors of skin. I think we should go in order mm. of what you painted. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Let's start off with the bamboo charcoal. Now, I have a question. Bamboo has absolutely a neutral flavor. There's nothing to it flavor-wise. So is the outside of the duck really going to permeate into the meat of the duck? Let's find out. Oh. Oh, delicious, tender, juicy. Mm. The meat is so moist. But crunchy on the outside. Mm. I wonder if the charcoal has affected how crispy it is. I can't tell if it's more or less rich, although it is very rich. Mm. Next up, we have the one that's coated with the chili flakes. Oh. Oh, that's spicy. Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> you feel it? Uh, yeah. Not, well, keep chewing, buddy. I will. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm not good at <laughs> This one is more malleable and flexible, not really so crunchy, but it has a nice coarse texture on the outside and you just feel a little bit of that fiery blaze while you eat it. Oh, fiery blaze indeed. Next, sesame. Mm -hmm. Completely new experience. It's nutty, mm, but it has like a really nice stiff crunch to it. Your words are good today. Finally, we move to our last flavor, the glorious honey glazed duck. Oh, it's beautiful. Shall we? Cheers. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, that's delicious. If you've never had duck, it's really hard to describe. And although it's a bird, it's not like chicken. It has a very gamey flavor to it. This is the first time that I have like on one duck, but four different things. They are surprisingly different. Every bite is a new adventure. It takes you down a new path. It's a roadmap of flavor, and there's no wrong direction. No, but it all leads to the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> this one coming in not that much more than the rabbit. Now, this is even more protein, but beyond that, it's more to experience. There's so many different flavors, there's bread, and then there's all the delicious dog jus from the inside. Twin, final thoughts? Wow. <laughs> Great contribution. <laughs> Hi, guys. 
we've come to a brand new location. Here, they are kicking out with some real special flavors and things you have never seen before, I guarantee it. Really? We've seen a lot. How about this? A table. It, no, there's a pig. Do you see that this is a pig? I don't know if we can put this part on YouTube, but look at the rest of the pig. Oh, hey, look at pig. Here, they're making whole suckling pig. Mm. Now, what does suckling mean? That's great. I went to culinary school. A suckling pig is the age of the pig. This pig is only maybe 30 to 45 days old. That's when they get slaughtered and we eat it. Chef Kuhn has 20 years experience in Chinese cuisine. He now spends time perfecting his recipes at Toon Garden as the barbecue head chef. So together with the bones, it's three kilogram, but without it, then only 1.5 kilograms. What? Wait, so you remove the bones from this pig? Yeah, like all of it. The deboned piglet is cleaned in boiling water, then torched to remove any remaining hair. Season the inside of the pig with MSG, five spice powder, licorice root powder, and white wine. Now for the stuffing. In a wok, stir-fry Chinese sausage, shiitake mushroom, sticky rice, and oyster sauce. Usually, like when I had suckling pig in Hong Kong, it was butterflied and it was flat, and they roasted it flat. Here, they have a suckling pig, and they actually roast it and put it in the shape of a little lechon, like a little rotisserie pig. Oh! But Flynn, isn't it butterfly right now? Um, yeah, so let's talk about that. Earlier today, you torched a dead rabbit. You did amazing. Good job. You Van Gogh'd a duck. Thank you. Sir, I'm going to help you sew this pig shut. Don't say anything. Let them discuss. I don't want your help. <laughs> Now, Twin, it's really important to keep the stuffing inside the pig, not outside. So far, it's mostly in the pig. Until this next move right here. So it goes in, it goes under, through, and then around. Okay. Under, through, and around. Um, no. No. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's gonna splatter out. It's gonna spill. It's gonna spill. All of the yeah. insides are just gonna... All the good stuff. Can I say something, my man? We just need close-ups of me doing it. Could you put on my shirt and we just get your hands? Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked Kelvin and Twin to leave so I can be alone with my masterpiece, carefully sewing it shut inch by inch until the stomach is perfectly secure. I must say, I'm quite proud of my work here. Next, I apply a shiny layer of barley malt syrup and vinegar. Now it's ready for the roasting machine. After roasting is complete, the chef tags in once more, unwiring the pig, then dousing it in hot oil before sending it out the door. This is a recipe that goes back potentially months or even years. It is traditional to this restaurant. Of course. Looks horrified. <laughs> really? What are the eyes made of? Cherries. Maraschino cherries. We should pluck off one of these limbs first. This is the only part with a bone still left on the pig. Everything else has been deboned completely like a jellyfish with little bone arms. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Mm -hmm. it has such a sweetness to it. It's so young. It's so ripe. It's so tender. Oh, you can saw right through this thing like a log. Ready for the reveal? Big reveal. Okay, here we go. Holy cow. Ready? Yes. Let's go for it. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. The fat rendered down into the stuffing mm. really has this like great porkiness to it. It's very rich. It's not overwhelming. Mm. It's just good. You can feel the distinct layers as your teeth pass through them. The protein has a little bit more bite to it. The fat is soft. The skin is crunchy. There's little grains of sticky rice holding on for dear life. This, this is amazing. From here, we could cut the whole thing in half and take a look at the cross section. Count the rings and see how old it was when it died. That's a tree. <laughs> Oh, 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 the noise, the skin. Oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> wow. Dude, this is food that makes you giddy. It is amazing. Three. Two. One. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Oh wow. Wow. Oh my word. Mm. So good. They should start selling these at baseball games. That is the thing. It is not so easy to just get these. Not only do you have to order it a day in advance, but it costs $121. Oh. Um, do you think this is a good value? I think it's incredible value. I would say the only drawback from a traditional roasted pig is that there's not this huge variety of textures to choose from. It is kind of one consistent texture all around the pig, but the rice, there is so much rice that I would have to take it home and, and repurpose it. 
I think the chocolate cake is an experience that not everybody gets a chance to try in one's lifetime. But if you can find it in a city near you, you have to. And I know that it won't be stuffed with sticky rice. It may be done Spanish style. It might be done Cantonese style. It might be done a lot of different ways, but at the end of the day, the true star of this is that beautiful crackly skin and that moist tender meat. The only thing left to do now is to decide which food today gave us the most bang for our buck. Let's go. Today we had three different types of barbecue. Now, I gotta say, all of them, to me, were fantastic. Usually this is very easy, because uh, you know one place can be a bit of a stinker. Not today. We have the roasted rabbit. We have the quad flavored duck. And to finish it off, we have the suckling pig. Twin, I wanna know which one do you think was the best value today? Which one gave you the most bang for your buck? I would have to go with the third one. It was phenomenal from the presentation, you know, the cooking technique, the ingredients. I had picked before, but nothing was like this. Calvin, most bang for your buck? Best bang for your buck, Sunny. <laughs> Agree with you? Mm. The suckling pig. The suckling pig is such an experience. You can get suckling pig anywhere. But for him to really think about stuffing it with sticky rice and then roasting it in the big oven, it's something I think everybody should do once in their life. Sunny, what was the best bang for your buck? I gotta say, every place was a tough contender today, but I have to also go with number three. Yay! I love the rabbit and I love the duck, but my gosh, I've never seen a pig looking sausage like that. Crispy, even skin on the outside, just plump, full of sticky rice on the inside. Super creative, and I can't wait to take my dad here so he can show me how unimpressed he is. Mm. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Oh, you're getting some good sweats going. Yeah. Can we get a napkin, please? Oh, yeah. Uh, dry tissue on set. We need a pet pat. I'm Kelvin, and he put some sauce on his forehead. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's my phone. Sorry. <laughs> Is that a what? No, you, now you give some kind of oh. positive reaction. Cool. <laughs> So this is what it feels like to be on set with Twin. Boom! Location food, food. <laughs> Location two, food two. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh she English. got it. Can we just speak English? I don't think she got it. Oh, All right, that oh. might have been the end. Guys, I want to say a huge thank you to both Twin and Calvin for joining me today. First of all, Twin. Twin, you can find her right here on Instagram. Send her pictures, whatever kind what? of pictures no. you want. <laughs> no pictures. And we have. Calvin, Calvin over here, FKN Deliciousness, boom. Instagram and YouTube, you can send him messages on Instagram, but please be kind and be gentlemen when you message Calvin. <laughs> Why would there be gentlemen messaging me? Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Triple peace. All right. Oh, man. Man, dude, I cannot my wait to go to is one more place and try some more barbecue. And my the, gosh, the sticky that was rice so delicious. Plus, maybe if butt. I had some potatoes on the side. <laughs>